so I get this question quite often, and uh, you you obviously do too. Let's say for facts. Here's the facts. You have a tenant in the property, landlord happily renting. Tenant is a good tenant, pays rent, no, no worries. At the next moment, sorry, the next moment, <coughs> um, the police rocks up to the place, arrest the tenant, uh, ongoing investigation, obviously, but he is in uh, under arrest, doesn't get bail. So he's uh, in the holding cells and he is hanging out there for a little bit until this problem is resolved. From the facts and from the uh, what the police is saying, the investigating officers, they want access to the place um, because there is a, a suspicion that the crime may have been committed in the premises. Now, we're not talking something like murder. Um, uh, we they think there's a dead body that's something completely different obviously that changes the thing but let's say for argument's sake it was uh, a not a very obvious crime let's say uh, cooking meth uh, so I will, I'm going to give you a, a story of one of my clients that I've had where uh, the kitchen burned down tenant was very upset because the landlord didn't want to repair the kitchen and this is going to full circle to my question. Um, landlord didn't want to repair the, the kitchen. Tenant was uh, very sad, uh, threatened to uh, to sue the landlord um, if he doesn't repair. And, and the moment I started digging around, I realized the reason why the kitchen burned down was the uh, tenant was cooking meth in the kitchen. Now, I personally never cook meth, um, so I have no idea what uh, the risks involved in meth cooking is. But apparently, there's quite a few flammable things involved which is why i would also encourage our viewers not to put anything flammable in your body that might not be ideal but be that as it may um so the the tenant burnt the kitchen down so so two questions one what can you do as a landlord if the tenant is paying rent but he's been arrested and the chances are very high that this this tenant will be going to jail after this investigation and two if there isn't an investigation yet, but you know for a fact your tenant is doing something illegal, cooking meth, running a brothel, uh, running a chop shop, whatever sort of crime there is, um, uh, what is a landlord to do? What are uh, two very different scenarios, but uh, can a landlord just cancel because of that? What's the story? Sure. Okay. Yeah, so so this is something we actually experience quite often. Um, so Basically. going back to... Yeah, no, it's it's actually it's actually <laughs> insane. But so so the reality is, if a person can't get bail, um, they get stuck. They get stuck in jail. Uh, that that actually rhymes. That's um, okay. Any case, um, so <laughs> if if that happens, if that happens, then he's obviously not going to be able to reside on the property. So so landlords auto have this automatic instinct of saying, well. You know, lease is over. You can't reside on the property. You know, there we go. But remember, use of the property, especially for occupation's sake, isn't necessarily uh, isn't necessarily defined or limited to the person has to sleep there every night. Um, in fact, if you look at the fact that some people lease our places and then they go abroad for three months or four months, um, the reality is they don't have to be in the place sleeping there, but they use the place for residence. Uh, when they are around. So just because a person's in a holding cell or has been arrested, um, it, as provided that they continue paying rent, it's perfectly fine. There's nothing There's nothing wrong with it. They are still technically tenants. So that's kind of the first thing to look at. Now, the, the normal follow-up from that that I experienced is when people get arrested, they stop paying rent. I mean, it's, it's pretty much what happens. So in this it's a really rich family where the person gets arrested, but everyone has the forethought to keep paying rent in case he gets out. In most cases, uh, there's, a, there's an eventual breach. So that has to be dealt with by the landlord. And it's a normal breach. So you cancel the lease agreement as you normally would, and you get a court order to empty out the premises, and there you go, right? And that's the normal recourse, as if the guy was there, except he's not physically present. So it would be a lot easier to actually get those orders and that sort of thing, because you know exactly what's happening. Now, going back to the scenario, now we're starting to ask the question, what if, for example, there's illegal or criminal activity on the property? Right. So, to Song's example, the, the, the cooking of meth, as, as uh, um, in that instance, or in instances similar to that, 
we need to remember, we need to go back to the contract. And this actually still applies to the first answer that I just gave as well regarding can you cancel the lease agreement. The reality is the contract would govern what um, what you're allowed to do and what you're not allowed to do. So can you cancel a lease if the person absconds or isn't in the property for over a month? Possibly if it's in the lease, there's nothing wrong with having a clause like that, especially when there are properties, for example, that require continued occupation uh, for the fear of vandalism and that sort of thing. In South Africa, it's a real thing. You leave a property empty for a month, and next thing you know, you've got uh, you've got squatters. And so continued occupation could be a requirement, but it isn't implied by law. You'd have to have it in your contract. Uh, the conducting of criminal activity on the property, same thing. So it's yes, one could say that in law, you'd expect the property not to be used for criminal purposes. Absolutely. So if you could argue that the use of the property is changed and the person's running a drug den or running a brothel, or uh, you know, selling things out of the property, then you could probably cancel because the use has changed entirely from being a residence to you know actually being a criminal business. Um, if if the criminal conduct, for example, is putting the property at risk, so for example, the cooking of meth and the burning down of the kitchen, that's also another example because it's covered in the lease agreement, not directly as a criminal act. It's any act that could potentially cause harm to the property would be grounds for um, for for uh, canceling the lease. But for instance, if the person occasionally steps out, uh, you know, steps out into the garden and you know takes a drug that that is illegal, but he's taking it and goes back in, then it, there it's a bit on the fence because yes, he's doing something illegal on the property, but your lease doesn't cover it. He's not using the property for anything different. This is his own recreational things and he goes back in and he sleeps like any normal person does can you cancel the lease it's a difficult one like uh we've we've never needed to consider it to that degree and i don't know of any case law that that um mm -hmm. says or, or gives us the answer as straightforward as that uh what you typically find is the landlord more often than not doesn't even know that that's happening or doesn't even care because the reality is why would he so the, if the guy's paying rent and he's doing something quiet that doesn't impact anyone else and doesn't go against the substance of the lease, the landlord often don't uh, don't mind at all. And to the last point to the question, I remember I know that someone mentioned that the cops wanted to go onto the property uh, to search for evidence or whatever the case is. Um, so remember, guys, that touches more on the criminal uh, criminal law side of things. So I'm not an expert in that, but if there's a warrant, uh, yes. Absolutely, you have to open the door, or they can open the door for you. It's but they're allowed inside the property. Uh, without a warrant, if memory serves, and this is probably like information that's about 15 years old, but if memory serves, it has to be material and there has to be a reasonable suspicion um, that there's something there. But that I don't know much about. What I do know is if the person's been arrested, there's an investigation, getting a warrant isn't particularly difficult. So uh, more often than not, as a landlord, you just kind of open the door and let the cops in. Yeah, and I, I would definitely advise um, not to open unless there's a warrant, unless it's yeah. something like, the, like I said, a murder or something where they think there's a dead body or there's a severely harmed person. Obviously, that gives rise to breaking down a door but the, the, the you know the law isn't really like in the movies the cops doesn't just run in and kick down doors and yeah. stuff yeah. you need a warrant it's actually the law is actually quite boring and clean to be quite honest <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah.